Welcome back. Let's take a look at the biggest movers in the market right now. MGM falling by 23% after announcing it is closing its Las Vegas casinos. Gap dropping by over 25% and Kohl's falling by 13% as retailers weigh store closures around the country. And Boeing falling to its lowest price since 2016, down 18% trading at that 138 level. And Bitcoin falling by over 5%, now hovering just above that 5,000 level. Let's get right to some trading trades with Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Melissa, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks for having me. Exciting week to be trading. <laughs> it, it is a, quite the week. Uh, it definitely can't look away from your screens for too long. And I guess everyone is, they're looking at their screens and they're, they're just trying to get a feel for where are we at in the sell-off? Are we getting near the bottom? Is this sort of where we start to hit that trough or is there still a lot further to run on the downside? And I guess that would, I'd be interested to hear your take on that. Right now, when I look at this market, and again, I'm a technical person, I read gaps in the market. I'm looking at this, and from the gap down that we had, which was last Thursday, that was very, very significant. The rally that the market had Friday that a lot of people thought might be the bottom didn't hold once again today. We opened lower this morning. Now, while we're rallying on the day, the way we opened, like I think the market was open for like five seconds this morning, then it was halted. In this type of environment, I think that when people want to buy every dip, they're they're going to get hurt because there really is no way to tell at this point when we're going to start bottoming out. The way that I would be looking for it is for big momentum to the upside, which is buying, okay, which would be a gap up, not gap downs, and then some follow through. Like even Friday, we rallied. We didn't have any follow through today. We didn't even have two days of follow through. And if you go back the last, pretty much the last two weeks, I saw that we were going to sell off March 3rd. March 3rd at night, I was watching the post-market trading. I saw we were going to sell off in big. I didn't know exactly when, but I knew it was coming up. And, and I have never seen so much volatility in the after hours as I've seen in the last month. Now, a lot of traders don't necessarily watch that time period. But during that time period, I don't trade it but I watch it and I read it and that helps me predict what's gonna happen next. By after hours, I mean at night and I mean in the early, early morning. There's, I've never seen this much after hours post-market trading that I've seen in the last month. It, it is almost unprecedented as far as I'm concerned. Besides the fact that we've halted, I think now four times in the last week and we're halting right into the, into the open. That is terrible. That is not a good sign. That You were talking with your previous guests about consumer confidence, trader confidence. The last thing you want to do is be in a trade and then not be able to get out of it. Hmm. And so I think, you know, in the overnight moves, your, your points will take just the vault that we're seeing overnight, and there's usually more index type products. So right now in this environment, are you thinking, steer clear of the indexes and maybe look for more individual names, you know, whether you want to be on the long or short side. What are you viewing this market if you are going to try and trade during those regular hours? I would definitely look for stock specific things, whether they're weak stocks, whether they're strong stocks. You're getting a really nice rally today, actually in Kroger, that had a rally $3 up today. All the stores that are opening and still in business and selling products, you know, those are the ones that you want to be buying, the ones that are rallying, again, that are having the buying and the follow through. Target, Walmart, Kroger, Amazon chart is not quite broken yet. The problem with the SPY or the S&P and the QQQs and even the, the, the diamonds that I watch is that those charts are, are broken. They're broken since last week, which means they're in a downtrend. Now, why a lot of times people want to buy stuff on the cheap, because I think we're going to buy it here and it's going to go back up to the high. I'm not saying the market doesn't go back to the high. I'm saying I don't know when that occurs. So if you if you don't want to feel any pain, then you can't buy here because we might be lower before we turn around. They're coming out today. The White House, the Trump administration now is discussing an $800 billion stimulus package. I don't know what that's going to include. And I'm not sure if that's really going to jolt this market out of this drop off and this sell off, because the fact is that they're, they're giving now a two week period, a one month period or a three month period for life to get back to normal with the coronavirus. Well, that that really doesn't tell people much. Hmm. And so if you're looking at that and you see some opportunity in those retailers that still have their doors open and still have customers coming in and out, but you don't necessarily see the, the breadth that we would need to move the market higher, you know, what are you looking for for names that, are, that are, have been weak or are going to continue to be weak or, or maybe might even accelerate here a little bit in the future? What are some of those names then you're watching to the downside? 
all of the airlines, all of the cruise lines, Boeing has been my favorite pick pretty much since December. In fact, we I've been calling nonstop puts in Boeing pretty much since December and every single solitary one worked. As far as your viewers right now, the, the it's the best time to be an active trader because if you're a long-term investor right now, you're scared. You don't know if you should sell or buy. But if you're an active trader, if you can do options, if you can day trade, if you're an active trader, this this is the best market I have ever seen to trade in the last month. Well, you can make a ton of money if you're on the right side of it. But if you're on the wrong side of it, you're going to get hurt. And the best advice that I could give to people is, if you're up, make sure you book the profits because you never know what's going to happen overnight the next day. But if you can play it on the right side, you're going to be fine. This doesn't mean that companies like Boeing and the cruise lines, which may end up filing for bankruptcy protection, same thing with the airlines, or get some kind of lift from the government, they may have a pop. But they're so far down that I think that there's going to be another drop off in all of those things. I mean, I, I hate to say it. This is terrible to say because it's a long way from here even today when you had Boeing up. Boeing could go all the way down to 125, 120. It could even go all the way down to 100. And that would look so damaging for that chart. So you say two weeks ago, people were telling Melissa, uh, this, you know, I don't want to jump in here short now because I think it's too late. And I'm laughing to myself because once I saw that gap down Thursday morning, I said I knew it wasn't too late because the people kept buying. The only way that you have a market that's going to turn around is if you have big institutional money that comes in and buys the market. Like the Fed coming out with the, with lowering the interest rate. That did not help. In the last week, we had some good economic data. That did not help. Doing the daily press conferences, that did not help. The problem is that people are worried about losing their jobs. Businesses are worried about closing and then the lost revenue. People are worried about their real estate because if real estate prices go down, people have loans on their homes and mortgages. While it's great to say that interest rates are low, I think banks are going to really start to hoard their cash. They're going to tighten up on the lending because they're going to want to preserve capital. And if banks don't want to lend, even if rates are low and they want to preserve capital, that isn't good for the economy as well. Right now, you're in New York and you live in New York. It's it, people are acting insane. When you go to the grocery store, there's almost nothing there. People are acting like they're never going to be able to buy food again. Definitely, it's, it's certainly going to be an interesting market to watch, and, and I, I, I do agree. It's, it's if you're an active trader, there's certainly a lot of opportunity here with the, the back and forth moves, especially with the VIX side. Is so, we'll uh, we'll keep watching that for, uh, throughout the week and sort of see what what settles out here. But thanks a lot, some great names for us to watch. Uh, that was Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Coming up next. We'll look how the airliners are dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. We've 